Home Assistant just dropped a big announcement last week as part of Year of the Voice during their live stream for Chapter 4, a feature that has been the most requested feature since Voice was announced earlier this year, and that is, of course, Wake Words. So today I want to show you how to get Home Assistant set up with Voice, including using Wake Words, and then I'll show you how to build your own Voice Assistant using a microphone, a speaker, an ESP, and of course, some ESP Home magic. Earlier this year, Home Assistant embarked on what they were calling Year of the Voice, where they basically focused a lot of their efforts on adding a voice assistant to Home Assistant, much in the way you can interact with Amazon or Google Home using your voice, except this time there was a focus on it working locally and also a heavy focus on privacy. We've seen the voice features develop over the course of this year. First, we were able to input text to control a device in Home Assistant, and then we were able to use things like analog phones to talk to assist. Then we got a push to talk on ESP home devices. And then this chapter allows us to use wake words. Using wake words like OK, G, or saying the name of Amazon's voice assistant to trigger it is of course a really important process in using your voice because it's not really too practical to go over and press a button to have to talk to your house. So that is why the wake words feature is such a big deal. The first thing we need to do is set up the voice pipeline in Home Assistant first, which is going to allow our microphone to stream data into our Home Assistant server where it's going to be processed. So to do that, head over to settings and then voice assistants, where we find the main page for configuring any of the voice assistant settings. In the assist section, you'll see that there is already a default pipeline set up called Home Assistant. At the core of Home Assistant's voice setup is what's called a pipeline. And a pipeline is basically a flow of different things that happen as you interact with Home Assistant using your voice and as it interacts back with you. And these pipelines are cool because unlike other voice assistants where everything is pre-canned and set up for you, you can change each stage of the process to really configure it the way you like. And because you can create as many pipelines as you like, you can assign different pipelines to different devices. Now, don't worry if that all sounds a little bit confusing. It should hopefully become more clear as we go through it. Click on the default pipeline first called Home Assistant, and you will see that there are four sections, the conversation agent, the speech to text, the text to speech, and the new wake word section. If you try and click on any of the drop down for any of these, they aren't really gonna have any of the options available because we haven't installed some of the additional components that we need, so we're gonna do that now. Head back to settings and then add-ons and head into the add-on store. There are three add-ons that we need to install. Let's start with Piper first, which handles the text-to-speech component and hit install. Once installed, you can go over to the configuration and change the voice model, if you like, to one more suitable for your language, and then head back and make sure to hit start on boot, and then watchdog are enabled and hit start. Then go back to the add-on store, and this time install the whisper add-on, which is going to be responsible for taking the speech from our microphone and translating that into text. Hit install and make sure watchdog and start on boot is enabled, and then in the configuration tab, you might want to change the model which determines the speed and accuracy of the translation. Depending on your hardware, you will need to select the appropriate one for you. If you're using a Raspberry Pi 4 or similar level of hardware, you're going to want to stick with the tiny Int8 model. If you have a bit more powerful hardware, you could try the base or even the small models. And you can play around with these to see which one has the best performance and speed for you. Once the model is set, make sure and start the add-on and then head back to the add-on store. Finally, we're going to install the new Open Wake Word add-on, which as the name suggests, is going to identify wake words coming from our microphone. Select the options again, and then under configuration, we aren't going to change anything just yet, but do be aware of the threshold and trigger level options here for fine tuning later to improve wake word detection. Then start the add-on and next, head over to settings and then devices and services so that we can configure those add-ons. You might be wondering why we are installing an add-on for wake word on Home Assistant when surely the wake word should be done on the microphone, right? Does that mean that only our Home Assistant server can do wake word and any other device can't? Well, the way wake word works, tongue twister, in Home Assistant with this new update for now is that any compatible device is going to stream its microphone to your server 
and the Home Assistant server itself is going to process that audio and listen for the wake word. So for example, if you have a microphone in your kitchen and one in your living room, both of those devices are going to stream their microphone to your server, where it's going to look and process that audio for the wake word. Now you might be wondering, isn't that inefficient and isn't that going to use a lot of bandwidth having microphones streaming all the time? Bandwidth wise, no, not really. They talked on the stream about how it uses about 32 kilobytes per second per device, which is very minimal. And of course their goal is to have wake word done on the end device. That's just a really challenging thing to do as it turns out. So while they work on making that happen, this provides a nice stopgap. You should immediately see that all three services are now showing up with the Wyoming integration, which is basically just a protocol that the services use to communicate with Home Assistant, similar to MQTT. Hit configure on all three of the services to finish setting them up, and we can now configure our voice pipeline. Back in the settings page for voice assistant, select the Home Assistant pipeline once again, and set the speech to text dropdown to whisper, selecting the language that you require. And in the text to speech dropdown, select Piper, again, selecting your preference. Finally, in the new section, the wake word section, we are going to select open wake word from the dropdown, and then you will get to select which wake word you want to use to wake up your speaker, of which there are currently five with open wake word, all of which are in English for the time being. Now, two things here. Firstly, it is possible to add more wake words to this list if you want to use the Porcupine wake word engine instead of open wake word, but I don't believe it's completely open source as I understand it, so I'm going to stick to open wake word for this guide, but I'll leave a link down in the description and that is definitely an option for you. And something I'm sure you are anxious to know is, does this support custom wake words? And the answer is yes, it does. You can train your own wake word models, which is really cool. It does require a bit more work, but there is some instructions to step you through everything if you want to go down that route. They did say that the custom wake words won't be quite as good as the pre-trained models, just due to the amount of training data available to them, but they did mention about opening a place on the forms to share wake words with each other, so that will be really cool, kind of like how Blueprints works. That is our pipeline now set up. Let's give it a test and see if it actually works. First, head to your dashboard and click the assist button, and then we are simply going to type a command in to test if the conversation agent is working properly, and if it is, you should get a response and your action should happen. Next, we want to test the speech to text portion, so we're going to hit the microphone button and speak the command instead, and again, it should give you a response. Note that the first time you speak a command, it might take a little bit longer as the system starts to cache responses, it should get a little bit faster. With both of these working, the last thing we need is a device to actually test our wake word on, of course. Many of the voice demos that have been shown over the course of the year have been using the M5 Stack Echo, which is this really cool little device with a speaker and a microphone. But since the Home Assistant Guide does a good job of showing you how to use that, if you want to use the M5 Stack Echo, I thought instead I would show you how to make your own one with an ESP32. The two essential components you will need for this are an ESP32 and an I2S microphone. For my ESP32, I am using a development board. This is one that we made that I like. You can find this on our shop if you want to use this one, or you can use pretty much any ESP32 development board you have lying around. You can also turn existing devices that are ESP32 based into a microphone too, like the EP1 or the EP Lite or any other device that uses an ESP32 and has some spare GPIO. For microphone choices, I am using the ICS434034 microphone breakout board, which we also made, which is such a good quality little microphone and is kind of the one that I would recommend if you can find someone selling it or the older version of this that is more readily available on places like AliExpress or Amazon is the INMP441, which you can also find on a breakout board. By the way, I'll have links to everything I used down below if you want to pick any of it up and follow along for yourself. The optional things you will need, depending on if you want a speaker to give you feedback or not, is an amp and a speaker. I hooked up a microphone okay, only Nabi. to the EP1 for a voice command and it doesn't use a speaker, 
but for some places it might be nice to have one so that you can get feedback that your commands are working. For an amp, you will want something that is I2S once again. The Max 98357 is a popular breakout board that is really easy to find and can drive 2.5 watt speakers if needed. And for a speaker choice, you can use any two wire speaker, so long as it's appropriate for the amp. Don't try driving a bazillion watt speaker off this little 2.5 watt amp and vice versa. If you choose a smaller speaker, just be sure to limit the max volume so you don't blow the speaker out. Because we're using I2S for this, we actually only need four GPIOs for both the microphone and speaker, the bit clock or the serial clock, the frame sync or left right clock, data out for the mic and data in for the speaker. Go ahead and wire up the components just like this. Remember that both speaker and microphone can share the same GPIO for the serial clock and the left right clock, but data in and data out need to be on separate GPIOs. You can use pretty much any GPIO you want on the ESP32, just remember to edit any code to reflect that. Finally, we're going to go into ESP Home and create an ESP Home config. If you don't have ESP Home and you haven't ever used it before, I'd recommend my beginner's video to ESP Home first before doing this bit, as it could be a little bit confusing if you are new to ESP Home. So watch that video first and then come back and finish this one. Create a new ESP Home config for your device, and then we are going to paste in this config that I've created for you, which you will find linked down below. Some things to keep note of here. Firstly, we need to use ESP IDF for the new wake word stuff. So make sure that you have the framework set to ESP IDF instead of the default Arduino. Next down in the voice, we have our I2S audio block. Just make sure to set the GPIO pins here if you change them, as well as the same in the microphone and speaker blocks. Finally, in the voice assistant section, you might want to play around with the noise suppression level the auto gain and the volume multiplier settings. Those definitely made a big difference for me when it came to microphone performance and hearing what I was saying correctly. Then hit install and upload to your ESP32 using a USB cable. And then once done, take note of your IP address from the logs and head back to home assistant settings page and then devices and services. Add a new integration, search for ESP home and enter the IP address or if it's auto discovered, then you can add it that way. Once added, head into the settings page for the ESP32 microphone, and you will see that you have a couple of options for tweaking assist. Firstly, you can manually set the pipeline on a per device level. This is really handy, for example, if you want to have a different language for different devices, or if you even want to have different wake words for different devices, since each device can have its own pipeline. Next, you have the stopped talking detection level, and you also have a binary sensor for assist, which shows if assist is running or not, which is really useful for troubleshooting. Finally, there's a toggle switch for disabling wake word, and it could be a really good idea here, as was suggested on the live stream, to disable wake word whenever you are away from the room by using a motion or a presence sensor. And that will help save on some CPU power, as well as a little bit of bandwidth too. Finally, all that's left to do is say the wake word you selected in the pipeline, and if everything works, you should see the assist sensor in ESP Home, change to active, and you can speak your command. Okay, Nabu, turn on the office desk. Turned on light. Okay, Nabu, turn off the office desk. Nice, we just got wake word running on our own custom ESP32 microphone. All that would be left to do is turn these wires into something a little bit more presentable, like Paul's example, where he showed off an entire droid model with a rotating head during the presentation, which looks amazing. R5, turn on living room lights. I think it'll be really cool to see the creative things that people come up with, and I look forward to seeing what you all have to show. And that's about it for this video. Really glad to see some of the more advanced features like wake words coming into Home Assistant as part of Year of the Voice. And really the next big step for them to tackle at some point is to defeat the final boss 
and have wake word done directly on the device itself with some form of hardware, which I'm hoping we're gonna see sometime soon, but this serves as a great solution and a stopgap for right now. Anyways, let me know what you think of the wake word stuff down in the comments. I know it was something that lots of you have been waiting for, including myself, for so long, and now you can finally do it, and we are one step closer to that sweet, sweet local and private voice assistant. Other than that, drop this video a like and get subscribed, and I will see you in the next video.